Okay, so we, we add the, the video afterwards in our YouTube channel of the department and we can share with you and many of the students also can, they can um, connect and see the video later, okay, and, and get access to the information. Okay, so let's start. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jose Marcio, for giving this brief welcome and introduction. So now we're going to have Dr. Esti, who kindly accepted our invitation to, to share with us some knowledge on Indonesian administration, an overview. So please feel free to, to start your presentation. And later on, we'll have some, some time for questions uh, of the audience. Okay, so please. The stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Secret and Dr. Chapa and Dr. Marcio. Well, could you hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, because I I hope that I'm a little bit have internet connection right now, but I I hope that everything will go smoothly right now. Okay, so uh, let me share uh, my PPTs. So this is um well, is it a little bit information about um Indonesia? Well, maybe I I don't know whether some of you uh, ever knew about Indonesia or ever been come to Indonesia, but Indonesia was uh, is a uh, one of a uh, uh, big archipelago country, which is which means that we have uh, a lot of island uh, inside a, com a country. So this is Indonesia. Uh, you could see this map. This is Indonesia. is a big countries, and uh, as I said before, this is the largest uh, world largest island country and the fourteenth largest country by area. Uh, we have uh, more than 270 million people, and we are also uh, count as a uh, fourth most populous country and the most populous Muslim majority country in, in the world. Uh, and this is uh, uh, Indonesian flag, and this is Indonesian emblem. And we have, as I said, as an archipelago country, we have five main islands. We call this is Sumatra, and this is Kalimantan, this is Sulawesi, and Papua. And this is uh, where uh, Malang City uh, place is in East Java. And um, besides five main islands, we have 17,000 small islands and consists of 34 provinces. This, this is only a brief uh, overview about uh, Indonesia. And uh, talk about the Indonesian administrations. Uh, during um, uh, 69th uh, independence of Indonesia, we are ordered by uh, seventh uh, Indonesian administrator uh, the first uh, uh, president was Sukarno, and then continued by Suharto, and then Habibi, and then Kustur Megawati, and SPY. SPY is uh, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono, and right now we are under a uh, Jokowi administration. This is our president. Uh, maybe uh, this is uh, not uh, familiar for you, but at least I want to show you. Uh, who is our president for these uh, 90, uh, 69th years. Um, so I will talk first about the old order era in Indonesia. This is uh, our first um, administration uh, under Sukarno era. Uh, as I said, uh, as I mentioned in the second slide, that Indonesia was uh, gained its independence uh, in 1945 under Sukarno administrations. Uh, Indonesia won its independence from Dutch colonialism and the country was immediately began to rule themselves since 1945. And well, since this is our first independence administrations, so under the first president of Indonesia, Sukarno, it's not widely accepted uh, where many regions attempt to be separated from uh, his reign, I mean, the Sukarno uh, era. 
uh, after Indonesia freed from the colonialism, Indonesia faced uh, so many problems on how to grow the economic development and strengthen the pillar of the country. Uh, we have uh, struggling enough uh, in the political stability at that time because we just free from the Dutch colonialism. Uh, in this time, Sukarno reigns uh, attempt to propose the restoration economy and unify the country. Yet also, he destroyed the economic system as well as by seizing and demising the Dutch company into Indonesia ownership. Uh, uh, for your uh, information that uh, in the Dutch colonialism, uh, in the administration system, uh, Indonesian uh, civil servants, the original Indonesian civil servant is only 10% of 3,000 administration administrators at, at that time. So uh, most of them was uh, from Dutch. So it is not easy for us um, to maintain our economic condition as well as political stability uh, where we are uh, just... Uh, came to independence at the time. So this era was totally a mess at the time. And then uh, after the old order era, we called all other era and in the term of public administrations, we are uh, uh, count in the old public administration term. And in the Suhart and the new order era uh, under the Suharto administrations, this is quite unique because Suharto was lead us uh, is uh, have a long longest time. It's like about thirty two years. So he has uh, has been uh, he he he, ha he has been uh, our president for thirty two years. It's the longest presidency that ever been uh, ever happened in Indonesia, and uh, all those year, all those three, 32 years, the president Soeharto leadership practices were similar to the leadership practices of Japanese kingdom. So mostly like um, authority, authoritarianism, and also uh, most of people was uh, was uh, feared. Uh, uh, under his uh, range or administrations. Uh, so his practice were hierarchical and concentric with unconditional respect as well as deference and obedience. Uh, at the Suharto administration, the people aspiration was not uh, really accommodated within the system and this causing widespread unrest and aggress aggressiveness among the people. Uh, the widespread property uh, under 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 Suharto administration, there's a lot of uh, the uh, problem like, like a poverty and a nepotism, corruption, and also military intervention. There's a lot of dependency of foreign debts, also centralization in policy making, and the economic collapse was happened in 1998 that that was like a um, uh, turning point of the Suharto administrations uh, because of economic collapse in 1998 that caused uh, uh, extensive student protests, riots, and those uh, student protests and riots was targeting killings of Chinese Indonesians at the time. Uh, they kidnapped China, Chinese Indonesians and uh, raped, kidnapped, raped, and also killing those Chinese Indonesian because uh, the Indonesian uh, at that time thought that uh, one of the party who make Indonesian was collapsed is a Chinese, Chinese Indonesians. Too. So that's why uh, most of the people were uh, being racist at, at that time to the Chinese. Um, and also uh, besides of those economic collapse at 1998, the step down of Suharto was caused also by the pressure for the Western countries at that time over the human rights abuses in East Timur. So there are a lot of war in East Timur and under the Habibis uh, administration, 
uh, after the Suharto administration, we have Fuad Habibi's administration. The Habibi administration uh, released the East Timor into independence in 1999. Uh, as I mentioned before, his extensive power has caused a mass protest by students and lots of project supports. And the, his resignation in 1998 uh, from the presidency also marked the end of his extensive reign. Uh, but the financial crisis continued to deteriorate and the economy is collapsed for about uh, two or three years after that. So this is the Suharto administration. Because of Suharto administration, we are Indonesian thought that we are really need to have a like reformation era. So reformation era uh, is start in the Habibis era, continue until right now. So the reformation era was, um, I could say that is uh, proceed uh, under five different reigns. So uh, in the reformation era, the socio-political system that we have right now is more open, openly to the public and all of the people could, um, could uh, talk openly to the government, what they want the uh, government to do from them and also what uh, government have to do and everything about uh, uh, the public service that have to be more open, uh, transparent, more um, fair, and so on. So, well, uh, in Indonesia itself, the idea of bureaucratic reform has given some hopes to derive, uh, derive a solution to the problems of government bureaucracy and democratic stagnations at the time. It, uh, at, um, in the Suharto and Sukarno's era. And the reforms are expected to accelerate the realization of good governance as indicated by clear organizational vision, effective and efficient work, transparent and accountable decision-making in action and decisions. Uh, so with strong adherence to the attributes uh, of formal policies, the implementation of administrative reform are high needed either, either for all types of government, governance forms uh, or for the country policy. So this is uh, the, the reasons why uh, reformation era is uh, uh, we are doing right now. So, uh, well, actually, uh, at least there are uh, five uh, main reasons are the urgency of the bureaucratic reform uh, in Indonesia. Uh, there is a note at least uh, five. Um, the first is uh, we, we are uh, facing the increased apparatus expenditure caused by increase in the number of apparatus because of uh, uncontrolled and unmeasured apparatus requirement. Uh, for the information uh, right now, Indonesia have uh, more than four a uh, million civil servants that uh, consume uh, about 25% of total, uh, total national budgets uh, for the national civil servants. So we divided our civil servants into two parts, uh, the national civil servants and also the provincial or local uh, civil servants. And in the national civil servants, uh, to maintain to give the seller the salary for for uh for maintaining the civil service fund i mean giving the salary are uh, 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 uh yeah kind of a salary for the civil service fund is cons consume about 25 percent of the national budget uh for the provincial uh it's consume uh about 65 percent uh, which left only 35% for public services and capital expenditure for uh, the province. So uh, you can imagine uh, how, uh, why Indonesian have a very low or, um, um, yeah, very low public service uh, because uh, our budgets are mostly uh, 
uh, uh, spend to uh, to to pay the seasonal star fund. Um, and the second thing was is a planning cost of democracy or election. It affected the floated of uh, local government budget that increased significantly. Besides that, Indonesian people, Indonesian was um, have a very low democratic maturity. I mean that uh, even though we are uh, uh, have a, a very big event and um, in uh, election, we are spend a lot of money that have a high cost for election. Like in the 2019, we spent like Indonesians spent like about 1.7 trillion US dollar for the election. But uh, most of Indonesians uh, was not really uh, educated well related about who uh, was the uh, candidate. Uh, what was their background and what uh, what uh, what program that could give uh, uh, give them a uh, um, prosperity or something? Uh, the funny moment was in two thousand and fourteen, where uh, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono uh, is one of our president was uh, was a point uh, was um, elected as our president because of his face. I mean, because of charisma. Uh, all of the people, Indonesians, uh, if we, we, we ask them, why you choose Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono offer other a candidate? Because he has a charisma. Just because this is, we could say that uh, very low democratic maturity that uh, because of uh, non well educated uh, Indonesians, uh, about um, who is our candidate at what is democracy uh, meant to for Indonesian like like that and then the third is the increase of develop uh, the bureaucratic organization with the planning and analysis of the measure trigger financing and recruitment of apparatus that not less so indonesian have a very large and complex public administration architecture that consists of total 217 government agencies both national as well as provincial level um, consists of uh, 34 ministry and NTX statutory agency, 30 uh, for provinces and 516 regency. Uh, you could imagine uh, how we have to manage those all, all of this complex public administration architecture in Indonesia, how much uh, budget that we have to spend to maintenance them, how much money that we have to spend to pay all the of the civil servants Indonesians have. So, um uh, uh, maintaining our bureaucracy is a high cost so that's why the about bureaucratic reform is one of the point uh, that uh, indonesia to uh, save uh, uh, to save uh, uh, public service so and the fourth was uh, high public expectations and continue to increase so the public expectations for the government is uh, continue to increase um, and uh, have a lot of expectation right now. Uh, for example, related uh, about improving the public services, especially public uh, like a health, um, especially right now in the pandemic era, and also the educations and also transportations. And uh, Indonesian, our uh, citizens also need for the transparency in managing public sector funds and resources as there is a very volatile possibility of misuse, fraud, and corrupting in using public resources that uh, Indonesia face right now is a totally mess about the corruption and fraud and misuse in using public uh, resources. This is. Um, in the right side, you might see uh, the, the 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 table that is I uh, get from uh, the 
ADB report about the uh, professional professionalism index of Indonesian civil servants that you could uh, see that here that from the fourth dimension of the professionalism was qualification, competence, performance, and discipline. Indonesian civil servant was categorized by low. Only uh, in institutes uh, only uh, moderate. Uh, most of them was low. And um, the fifth um, is that have a corruption. Indonesia a condition on corruptions that's uh, quite uh, emergency right now. Uh, spread all of the regions in Indonesia. So this is uh, this is in Indonesians. I I don't have time to translate it into English. Um, this is from um, uh, Transparency International. This is a uh, index of uh, corruption in Indonesia that we are ranked in 2020. Uh, we have uh, replaced in 102, uh, 102 in the rank. So we are still uh, have a, a homework uh, related about the corruption that this 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 uh, word was the corruption in indonesia has getting worse and this is uh, what happened in indonesia right now uh, i don't know about uh, brazil maybe uh, after this we could discuss a little bit about brazilian uh, positions about the uh, corruption or maybe public administration we could compare it and maybe we could uh, have a discussion and maybe you have uh, in in brazilian have like the innovations how to reduce or cutting the corruption or so on so maybe we could uh, discuss later on and therefore indonesia uh, i put in a very great effort uh, in uh, combating the uh, corruption and improving the public service by establishing the law and regulations. Uh, we are introducing a new state finance and auditing system and establishment of Ombudsman of Republic Indonesia for um, uh, monitoring the public service in Indonesia and also the Corruption Eradication Commission. But these two institutions was um, uh, have a lot of haters i mean uh, uh especially for the politicians a uh, lot of politicians uh, really uh, have uh, uh, really like um, trying to cut down these two institutions because uh make them uh, feel not feel free to uh, do every uh, every single ways to have um, to gain a lot of money in uh, in, in in every aspect in Indonesia, and then uh, we are entering the Grand Design Bureaucratic Reform that um, we set of establishing those two institution. Indonesia was uh, a start uh, to have a grand design for bureaucratic reform that is start from 2010 uh, has become a milestone for the government to built good governance and done by all of the ministries and agencies. So this grand design should follow up by all of the ministries and agency. And right now, all of the local government also have to have the grand design bureaucratic reform, um, adopting uh, from the adapting uh, from the grand designs that nationals have. And this, the Grand December Catastrophe Reform takes time from 2010 to 2025, where every five years, drawn up roadmap to tell plan of reform its stage. Um, and then the goal of PR, PR means here means bureaucratic reform, is the realizations of a clean and free government of corruption, collusion, and nepotism and also the realization of improved public services quality and the increasing capacity and accountability of bureaucratic performance. And this is um, the roadmap uh, of uh, uh, bureaucracy transformations uh, in Indonesia until 2000 and, uh, to, uh, 2005. And uh, it 
practice uh, written in the government rule number 81 81 and hand uh, the roadmap uh, in the first period is rule based bureaucracy we are trying to strengthen the government bureaucracy to realize a clean government and free from corruption pollution nepotism improving the quality of public services uh, uh, and improving the quality of the public services to the community and increasing bureaucratic performance capacity and accountability. And uh, for the second period, the roadmap uh, written in 2015 to 2019, uh, we are uh, concerning on the performance-based bureaucracy. So after we are trying to uh, the to the rearrange the bureaucracy we are um, moving to the how to make the bureaucracy performance uh, uh, getting better so we are doing like evaluate the results that have been achieved and continue the efforts that have not been achieved in various strategic components of the government bureaucracy in the first five years and then for the third period, which is uh, start from 2020 to 2024, was we are trying to get uh, or have dynamic governance, uh, which is we are to increase bureaucratic capacity to become a world class government. So this is uh, our vision in the bureaucratic reform agenda in Indonesia. And Okay, so this is uh, the indicator that uh, our uh, bureaucracy roadmap uh, was, as mentioned before, that have the indicator was uh, is a clean and countable bureaucracy uh, and capable bureaucracy and excellent public service. And um, uh, to have a clean and accountable bureaucracy, we are, um, promoting the anti-corruption behavior. And we are um, establishing, establishing uh, the index performance accountability value of government agency. And also we are having the Supreme Audit Agency op opinion. And uh, for, uh, for the capable uh, bureaucracy, we are have uh, institutional index, electronic best government system index and also national civil service professional index and for uh to excellency uh, the public service we also have the public service index and the outcome for this um for this uh, indicator was a uh, bureaucratic reform index and the impact uh, indicator is ease of doing business and corruption perspective uh, perception perception index and government effectiveness index and also trust parameter. Um, and there are at least seven uh, bureaucratic reform change uh, area. The first is uh, change management. Uh, the change management, uh, the, 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 the aim is to encourage ministry, institutions, and local government to internalize mindset change, uh, regulatory change that are done. Uh, we are doing uh, to 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 achieve those um, those uh, goals. Uh, Indonesians uh, established the and a form like a bureaucratic reform team. And as I mentioned before, we have a roadmap of bureaucratic reform. We also uh, uh, form the monitoring and evaluation of bureaucratic reform and change of mindset on performance culture. For the first, uh, it's not easy to change the mindset and performance culture of Indonesian civil servant. And um, the second one is policy deregulations. Uh, the aim was uh, to, uh, we, we asked, uh, and the government asked uh, all of the ministry, institution, or local governments to eliminate various policy or regulations that will hinder the development of the bureaucracy and the speed of service deliveries, del delivery. So we are doing harmonizations in the policies, 
and also a control system in the preparation of laws and regulation in Indonesia. And the third one is organizational arrangement. Uh, so the each ministry institution or governments have to organize or simplify the organization to create a more simple organization to support performance effectively and efficiently. So we are doing like organization um, arrangements, like we are doing mer merger uh, in some of the uh, uh divisions in the local government and to make a more simple and to cut down the the hierarchy of the bureaucracy from public service to the society second was the second one is institutional evaluations and also have it's not only the evaluation we also have to follow up uh, the result of the evaluation management. So here, every ministry, institution, regional government is obliged to implement an electronic-based government system. So we are now trying to implement Internet of Things uh, in, um, in all of the uh, uh, part of uh, Indonesian institutions and every level, uh, local government, uh, regional government, or maybe national institution, we are now trying to implement the electronic-based government system. But this is uh, a big uh, homework. This is not easy for us because most of our civil servant uh, um, <clears throat> uh, right now is like, um, is, um, uh, the age of the civil servant mostly, uh, if I could call it like, 40% uh, of a civil servant was uh, in for, uh, for, uh, 50 years old, uh, more than 50 years old. And it's not easy for them to adapt a new, uh, a new system uh, using electronic based government system. So that's our big challenges uh, about the management arrangement right now. And implementing the system, uh, uh, we hope that by implementing the system, uh, we could improve the quality of services, uh, increased uh, effectiveness, efficiency, transparent and accountable governance. That's uh, our, our, our vision. Uh, we are doing fixed business process and operational procedure, electronic based government system, and also we are doing public information disclosure. Even though, we, but but right now we are still trying to uh, uh to get a, a a good form um framework for this one. It's not uh it's not easy for us uh to uh doing all the things in intern uh, 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 in with internet uh internet of things or electronic base for Indonesia right now. So we are st still trying to adapt. Uh, so, uh, it's mini each ministry, institution, local government is encouraged to strengthen performance accountability by implementing the government uh, agency performance accountability system. So this is um, like a system that has to be done by all of the level of a government in Indonesia. Uh, by implementing this uh, accountability system and every year our institutions um, both uh, local or national government have to report it and uh, inform it to the public uh, through website uh, but uh, as i said before um, not all of the government so many it's not easy for us to adopt uh, something like this one. We are still trying to find uh, how how to encourage all of the city. So the re the result of the implementation accountability system is to create an organization that has high effectively and efficiently. Uh, so to uh, 
uh, uh, to do this, we are doing also uh, the legal enforcement and also performance accountability management. And uh, the next is uh, strengthening the monitoring system. So we also have uh, what we call as integrity zone. Integrity zone is uh, like a strategy uh, to, uh, for the Indonesian institution to accelerate democratic reform through the development of a role model that is free from corruption and provide excellent services. And the focus of the development of the integrity zone is on work units that are able to build an anti-corruption culture and provide excellent service so that the impact can be felt directly by the community. Uh, uh, to uh, make the integrity zone, uh, Indonesian governments also uh, prepare the Im implementation of the government internal control system, uh, the public complaints of form, whistle blowing system, uh, handling conflict of interest, then and integrity zone and also one of government international control apparatus. And the next is a civil surveillance arrangement. So every ministry, institution, local government must implement a merit system to create a provisional integrity planning for job requirements uh, or formation is uh, based on organizational needs following the agency or organizational position map that the civil surface uh, supervisory officer has determined. So we asked uh, the, the, the national uh, government asked uh, all of the level in the governments to uh, make uh, the, um, the planning to make the planning for employee needs. Uh, that following the organizational needs and being more transparent, objective, accountable, and free for corruption, collusion, and nepotism. That is uh, quite ideal um, goals, but this is not easy uh, for Indonesia. And also, uh, competent, uh, we, we are trying to make like competency-based employment development. Uh, we are doing like a promotion that uh, carry out open that and see to get a promotion and also uh, individual performance determination and enforcement of disciplinary roles rules or code of ethics and we are doing we are are trying to uh, implement the job evaluations and also per personal information system and And the next is the reform change area is improving the quality of public services. So R and nine concerning about the public is provide quality services for service users or citizens. Uh, what we call by excellent services. Uh, we uh, have, um, have these excellent services uh, in all of the level of the government. So uh, in order to um, to achieve uh, the, 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 aim, the aim uh, of the law, so uh, we are have a service standard and we are trying to have an excellent service culture and we are trying to arrange like a complaint management we also have an assessment of service satisfaction and also utilization of information uh, technology and as well as the ombudsman the institutions that i mentioned before was uh, is uh, uh, is in charge to uh monitor all of the uh, public services quality uh, in Indonesia. And that's a big uh, word for them. And maybe that's all of uh, my presentation. I have a discussions.
uh, about this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Okay, thank you so much, Dr. X. Um, clapping for you. We, we don't have this. Do you hear me or is my internet? Hello? Seems like we're trying we... to, we're trying to have uh, government reform as you are, are having. Indonesia. Uh, could you spend some time and talk a bit about Brajuwaya University? Brajuwaya. And uh, and just to give you give our students about the opportunities of studying there, then we can have our present our discussion. Okay, then uh, I will uh, have. Well, I also prepare about uh, Brajuwaya, so. <laughs> As I'm so this one. So, but you see my PPT. Okay, so this is uh we are here. Bravijaya is in Malang City, and this is our uh Bravijaya area. This is such uh one of the biggest um uh university in indonesia we are in the uh sixth uh ranked uh university in indonesia uh, uh, the, uh, the good university in indonesia and we are this is our uh the faculty of uh in indonesia consists of 15 and one of the old and biggest faculty is uh Faculty of Administration, my own faculty, Faculty of Administration. So uh, this is our um, building. Well, actually, so if if you like to know about FIA, FIA is Faculty of Administrative Science. We are established in 1960. This is one of the oldest faculties in University of Brijaya. And we are focused on uh, scientific development of public administration and business administration. So maybe so much related to it, uh, uh, faculty in uh, faculty, uh, your faculty. And this is the study program that we have. This is. Okay, um problema na internet, né? Afinal de contas, estamos do outro lado do planeta. Vamos aguardar um pouquinho ó, esse problema. Study deve... program and library science. We also have an educational administration. Also, in the master program, we have a business administration also, public administration, and a master art of uh, in higher education. And in the doctoral program, we, are, we only have one. Yeah, which is administrative science, a doctor of administration science. Uh, all of this uh, uh, study program was um, is accredited. At, uh, have uh, get uh, accredited accredited by a national accreditation agency in Indonesia. We uh, we've got A. I mean, that's the uh, the best uh, score. So. This is what we are doing. We have 159 lectures, 92 academic staff. And right now in 2021, we uh, have like about 6,000 students. And recently in 2021, we have uh, 1,400 new students. Uh, right now we have uh, international collaboration with um, Japan, Taiwan, uh, China, Malaysia, Australia, and we hope that we could have a collaboration with Brazil. Yeah. Uh, and if you like to know about faculty, our faculty, uh, you could join. Uh, so we 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 have a uh, uh, conference uh, in the near near future in the October. We call this ICOPA. And this is associations, and maybe maybe Professor Jose or Dr. Uh, Secret or Jolene, uh, Jacqueline. We also have this um, 
uh, have this event. This is Afisok and also IFOPA that maybe you could join it with, with us. Uh, if you would like to know about our faculty on what we are doing, we are could sharing uh, uh, information uh, here. And then this is about what we have. We have uh, buildings, um, gazebo, pavilions. Uh, this is uh, openly, this is called access openly by all of the students in our faculty. We also have a sport arena. This is uh, uh, private ownership by faculty, our faculty. We have 14 so, uh, social laboratory and uh, many facilities. And it's also the facilities uh, that provide by university. And this is also, we have a student institution and services. And uh, the new one was like a uh, bullying and sexual harassment treatment units we have. And maybe uh, if you like to know more about our uh, university, we could uh, talk uh, like the opportunity, we have uh, a lot of uh, collaborations, uh, like um, we call it as the exchange student professor. We have uh, exchange students. Uh, in the next, uh, in the last year, we are doing the exchange student with Purapa University. Um, uh, and in the 2021, uh, we have no exchange student because of COVID-19. We could uh, we couldn't have a uh, exchange student, but maybe we could propose uh, the student exchange uh, between our university between uh, between uh, your faculty and our faculty uh, through MOU. We, we could discuss with uh, Dr. Andy for for their uh, collaboration about that one. Or maybe you want to know more about our university. That's very welcome for me uh, to answer. If you have a question. Thank you very much. Very interesting. I must say that we have a partnership between uh, the University of Brasilia and Brawijaya. And uh, mm -hmm. we hope to develop this partnership. And we're doing well, actually. We're organizing several seminars together. Uh, regarding uh, your presentation, uh, I would like to say uh, something. We are in the similar situation. We are trying to get passed to the Cong Brazilian Cong Congress a bill that can uh, affect the whole public sector. And uh, we have several problems uh, as, as you have. But I have a, a specific question for you. How is e-government working in Indonesia? You, you did not mention a lot in your presentation. Uh, do you see a, a future for e-government, a more intensive use of internet for government services and government um, um, go bureaucracy? Can you talk a bit about, about that? Yes, of course. Thank you very much for the questions, uh, Dr. Uh, Marcio. Well, we, as I mentioned in my presentation, maybe just a little bit uh, of a very brief information about the uh, Internet of Things that of course, we are trying to uh, to adapt with the electronic things. Uh, we are doing like a government, uh, uh, what we call it as um, we call it as SPBE. So we are trying to make all of the public services uh, 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 using electronic things. So electronic government was one of is is one of uh, a point that we are trying to. Uh, adapt and used uh, in our government's uh, daily uh, things. But um, as I mentioned before, it's not easy for Indonesian civil servants to use uh, electronic things uh, uh, in the public service in uh, daily life because uh, we are not uh, used to be uh, gadget or maybe we are not using uh, uh, electronic things uh, at first before reformations uh, most of our civil servant was uh, I, I, I don't know because uh, most of our civil servant was uh, uh, have uh, 
well, like have a problem then like to uh, make a system for example for the public service they will start to use in for like about only one month then after that they are start to uh, to 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 um for not using that one so just this is like a culture maybe professor the culture of indonesians have indonesian civil and have they are not uh they don't have a uh what we call it as uh they don't like to uh, adapt to the new system something like that the, they they are trying to back to their old framework old system they ask uh, uh have what we call a status quo they like to yes i i just i just like to have a life like this just don't change everything in my life so something like that so if we try to uh give them uh an, a new like innovations or maybe uh give them a very new um uh, system to them they're just like no i don't want to use that mostly it's happened mostly all in all of the uh institutions in indonesia uh, i don't so that's why our governments try to change their mindset that first first thing that we are really need to do is uh, change the mindset of our civil servants. So first thing, it's, it's, it's even, it's not easy. Uh, it's, for example, uh, we, we, we ask them to, uh, the civil servants just give them like, you don't, you have to think uh, out of the box, for example, you have, we, we are, we are not, uh, we are right now is um, challenging to give uh, the public service more efficient, give more in, have a lot of innovations. We we cannot do a public service like uh, before a pandemic happened, for example. But they are still uh, trying to say no. I really want to uh, have uh, the old system, something like that. So it's not it's it's not easy for us uh, to ask the civil servants to adapt the new technology even the website um you we should have uh, to update the information in the website right but it's not uh, most of the government are not doing like that so this is uh big challenges for us to uh, change the mindset of the civil servants uh, but maybe in Brazil, uh, it's quite more uh, easy to to make them think that we have to be more open. We have to be uh, uh, have a, we have to adapt uh, more faster than before. But this happens in Indonesia. Is what I said to you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have opportunity for questions. Uh, Zigrid posted some, but uh, uh, if you want, anyone want to use the microphone for a question? Yes, so may I start, Professor uh, Jose Martin. Yes, please go ahead, Jacqueline. Okay especially to see so many similarities so when you do point in your conversation that maybe in brazil is different well i am not so sure so we are not very <laughs> we are not very far apart are we um there are um a lot of uh, compliments so by saying that I would ask students and faculty members between our universities would be very enriching and there would be many points that we could um, uh, exchange among ourselves, which would be very um, interesting. Um, I do have a question, Professor. I work with um, futures scenarios planning and I really um, liked and appreciated when you presented um, within your time frame of, you know, the reform for uh, less corruption and advancing the bureaucracy into something more efficient. You presented the grand design bureaucracy reform from 2010 to 2025. That's a 50 year gap. Um, and that is a, is a really interesting perception that you understand this is not something to be solved in one, two, three, four, four or five years. 
and it's a process of change, right? Um, do you see, and here is the question, uh, is there a stability among um, the leadership or the administration itself to be able to implement a plan that takes 15 years? Uh, well, interesting question. So uh, during the reformation, even though we have have, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, slides, even though we have a grand design, but it's still, uh, if we are um, honestly said, if we are frankly said that Indonesia is still in the period right now we are, that's not moving to the second period even though we are not if, as in, in in my slide they are like uh, the first period in my ranging the democracy in in, in the real situation we are still struggling in the first step we are still that we are still trying to uh we are still facing those those things we are not moving no, in the in, in the term of uh grand design we are now in the third period but in the realization we are still in the first period so if uh, we we have like a five uh, administration and the five administration um those first uh, period of grand design of bureaucracy is not done yet well this because a lot of corruptions are uh, high costs of a democracy we are so many so many leaders uh, was um was a cap was a uh, was uh, captured by corruption right now so this is quite um, a big homework for Indonesia. We we are trying. We are still struggling for the corruptions, and that whole we are not moving from the first period. Actually, this this this, uh, this uh, uh, the grand descent was was like an ideal situation that we are really hope to see in Indonesia, but. Um, the problem is not easy to make it uh, to realize that that's what happened in Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Right. Thank you. No, I believe we understand it very well. Yeah, uh, we, we have a question from Sigrid. She has facing some problem in her internet. Um, Sigrid, would you like to ask the question? Try if not. Well, I'll, I'll... Let's check. Do you hear me? Is it working right now? Yes, it's yes, kind yes. of is unstable. Okay, so first of all, thank you for your presentation and it gave us so many insights and me as well as Jacqueline, we understand, we see so many similarities much more than, than uh, differences. Uh, between both countries and some of the, the things you were pointing out, I thought, well, this could be perfectly, this could describe Brazil and public administration in Brazil as well. So um, it's nice to, to see that we're facing similar challenges. So my question is if your government or the governmental actors, they uh, try to establish, to, um, to promote a dialogue with the universities to develop joint solutions and how is this dialogue and if they can see the benefits of um, the academic production of knowledge to develop uh, public administration or is there a connection between those both actors or how how is that dialogue if it happens and how does it work yeah, okay, thank you very much, Dr. Secret. Well, um, that's a very a big question also for us, actually, <laughs> because, uh, well, in, in the term of governance, uh, of course, um, there are, we, we have to, the ideal situation is that we have to uh, have like a joint uh, collaboration with the government. We provide a research on how uh, 
uh, to make an excellent service for the government, what is actually the uh, the the citizens uh, need uh, uh, for the government, and what have to provide by government to citizen and so on, and what is the ideal situations and how to uh, how the government should proceed to make a good uh, excellent service and so on, but. Um, that's the ideal situation. As, as I mentioned, this is the ideal situation. But uh, and even in uh, in the level of a government, uh, we we provide our faculty provide a consultation uh, discussion. We open uh, open discussion with the government. Uh, we help them to make uh, like um, development planning uh, document. We are help them uh, to interpret the law or regulation on the public administrations related to the public services. And we are um, offering them like uh, giving, this is the good scheme to make your, uh, to, 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 uh, to make the public services uh, in your institutions more excellent. And we are uh, promoting the innovations that could be adapted by the institution and so on. But uh, the problem was, similar like um even though we are trying to give them the opportunity we are offering like the innovation from the university have this is a new system that you if if you if you apply this uh you will get a very simple uh, public service and so on but uh the problem is uh the the acceptance acceptance from them uh, not all of the institution, not all of the local uh, government, our ministries are uh, uh, accepting our offer. Just like, uh, what are you doing is not what we are trying to do, something like that. But we are still trying to uh, give them, uh, like offering them uh, the research or something like that. But Yes, it's it's depend on the uh, the institutions. Well, actually, that has happened. Not all of the institutions were open uh, uh, open joint collaboration with uh, the university. But still, yeah, we are trying to open the relationship with them to co to make a good collaboration. That's happened in Indonesia right now. Okay, so do you think it, it depends a little bit on the leadership of those institutions and how open minded they are to see that as, as opportunities? Uh, I mean, that dialogue with universities? Yes, mm. yes. Okay. that's kind of. Okay, okay, thank you so much, Dr. Esti. Okay, uh, we have opportunity for questions. Anyone want to, to, to ask a question to Dr. Asti Novita? Is a big opportunity for us. Is late in Indonesia. She must be tired of a working day. Want to go to bed, but want to know more about Indonesia. It was fascinating the beginning of presentation about the Indonesia itself. Uh, so we have more questions for Dr. Asti. Um, I, I have a question, Dr. Asti. Is Indonesia is part of ASEAN? Is uh, uh, one of the most important political regional uh, collaboration in the world? And um, uh, what can you say about for us about this in, uh, integration of ASEAN? And is it affecting uh, public uh, services in Indonesia? Is it beneficial? Is it bringing something that helps to develop the public sector in Indonesia uh, to be a member of ASEAN? Yeah, well, um, well, actually, I'm not really uh, uh, not really updating about it right now. But under the our president right now, the the Jokowi's presidency, uh, the 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 ASEAN. Uh, collaborations uh, that we are doing right now uh, is not really is, is con concerning on the how we are uh, facing the pandemic right now just uh, in the public service but um, the collaborations and uh, among Asians is like um, 
it's not really have a big uh, opportunity for Indonesia right now, uh, Professor uh, Marcio, because uh, we are now just uh, trying to uh, save our country from a uh, pandemic. It's even Indonesia was, um, uh, was rejected by uh, most of Asian countries uh, because we are uh, have uh, the 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 highest number of COVID nineteen. So recently, we are not uh, talking about uh, the collaborations on the public services between ASEAN member. So we are just trying to. Uh, how to survive for the pandemic. But uh, before the pandemic, yes, we are uh, have a very good collaboration with Singapore and also um, Thailand uh, about a uh, joint uh, uh, research on the um, sister, uh, sister city. We have uh, like a sister city, we are, uh, the, the Thailand have as I'm not really sure which 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 city, but um, we are uh, those those we have like a sister city. We, what what we call it like sister city? Like we are um, we help each other to build the uh, like transportation services and also the. Um, uh, a government between those city we call it sister city with uh, um, Thailand and uh, Indonesia Surabaya and the the Indonesian city uh, was named by Surabaya but I forgot uh, what name of the city in the Thailand okay. um, we are doing this kind of uh, collaborations all right uh, we still open for questions anyone? Anyone interested to know about um, uh, opportunities of study in Indonesia? I must mention that uh, the University of Brawijaya in Malang, they offer uh, uh, many disciplines in English. So, so you don't need to learn Bahasha Indonesia in order to go to Indonesia. And uh, you, it's, you can have your classes in offered in English, and uh, and they have a, a, a stronger tradition of internationalization than the University of Brasilia, because they have so many connections in Asia and also in Europe, in America. So, um, so it can be a good opportunity to to to, to go there and to have um, to learn about the country there. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, I must say thank you very much for everybody to come in for this very interesting session. It's not every day that we can have a full session in, uh, in a country like Indonesia, in Southeast Asia. is a growing economy, a prominent economy in Asia. In, uh, it's becoming more and more important uh, economic partner and trade partner of Brazil. And uh, um, uh, probably the, both the countries are going to increase um, trade in the coming years. And um, uh, there is a big opportunities in Indonesia itself, but also in Southeast Asia for uh, business, in, uh, business in Brazil, but also in, um, uh, for students to develop their careers. And uh, of course, we need some people knowledgeable about uh, South Asia, South Asia, South e e Southeast Asia. Asia and Indonesia. And it will be a very important skill uh, in Brazil. I'm quite sure about that. Um, I must say thank you. Ask, Dr. Asi, would you like to say anything else before we end the session? Uh, well, um, it's not uh, many things that I would say again, but 
uh, we are very welcoming you if you like to come to uh, our faculty on our University of Paris-Jaya. As uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Marcio, we are bringing international class. Uh, in our faculty also, uh, we also have international class in the public administration and also business administration. If you like to know about uh, how Indonesia running on the business and public administrations, we also offered. Uh, well, Professor, uh, we also have uh, our lectures. We also, uh, uh, some of our lectures, uh, both in business and public administration, we also have a um, company. We also built a company related to, our, related to the business administrations and also the public administration, which is, uh, um, well, uh, we have like, uh, if you like to know more, you could uh, search in Google. Is smart ID. Smart ID is uh, one of uh, the company that built by our uh, junior lecturers. So we have like a community that we are trying to help. We uh, our our uh, our um, goals was to help uh, Indonesians to be uh, come out better uh, countries and also uh, give um, offer uh, the governments to. Uh, to make them a more uh, give a more uh, excellent services for the citizens, if you like to know. And so, because so the if you like to come to Indonesia, you will not only have a material in class, but also you could join uh, have a project with the lecturers. You could know more deeply about Indonesia and what's going on in Indonesia, what's happened in the institution. Uh, the in the in the ministry in Indonesia and so on. So uh, that will be a very good opportunity if you like to join with us in Indonesia and also um, we like to see you personally in Indonesia, uh, Dr. Marcio, Dr. Jacqueline, and Dr. Sigrid. I hope this pandemic is over and we could I could go to Brazil as well. You can could go to Indonesia. We will, we will welcome you uh, openly and we will just, it will be honorable for us uh, to welcome you to Malang City. I will go, I will, uh, we will um, serve you well. We have a lot of um, natural uh, tourism in uh, Indonesia if you like to go to Indonesia. Maybe that's all from me. Thank you very much. It's an honor. Uh, Thank you. We really want to go and <laughs> really want to do as soon as possible. And I really would like to see you here in Brasilia and, uh, and in, in order to manage and to increase this partnership. Dr. Zigri, do you want to say anything? Well, I just want to thank you so much again for your presentation, for participating here with us in this session. And on behalf of the um, management department of UNIB. Uh, you are welcome. It is great to see you and hear you. And I think we have a lot to share in the future. So yes, let's work on our partnership. And we, we hope to be, well, the pandemic is gone soon and we can visit ourselves and, and um, develop research together and, and strengthen our partnership. So thank you so much. We, I, we, I hope to see you soon, here or there, <laughs> hopefully. And stay healthy. <laughs> Thank you so much, okay, Dr. Esti. Thank you. Amazing conversation and opportunity. Okay. Thank exchange. you very much, Jacqueline. Okay. Thank you very much, Zigrid. Thank you very much, everybody that could make it. And especially thank you to, for this brilliant presentation to Dr. Asti Amelia Novita and a partner of the University of Brazil. Bye bye. Hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.